Okay. What we will talk about now is propagation in new areas. Propagation in urban areas is quite different from propagation in rural areas. Mainly for two aspects, two, two effects. First is shadowing. <coughs> the shadowing effect of the Buildings, uh, depending on the urbanization, but buildings can be quite narrow and tall, depending on the kind of, of city we are talking about. So are very unusual obstacles with respect to the natural obstacles that you find in rural area. And then there is also channeling. of radio waves along the street. <coughs> that is, uh, urban canyons can uh, actually guide electromagnetic waves in the, along the street between the buildings. So, attenuation that you experience in that case can be very different from the space. Because this is actually a guided propagation. Can be, the, the attenuation can be even much lower than in free space because energy keeps traveling in the street without dispersion. So, but first of all, How we define a urban area? First of all, we have a classification problem. Because rural, completely rural area is pretty straightforward. But then you have everything from big cities like Tokyo to Suburban areas. So, how do we classify the environment for propagation prediction purposes? Because then you will need to adapt your methods to the environment. There are several methods, and I will uh, just let you expose you to the most known one. The first uh, classification method is the one proposed by Ibrahim and Parsons. We define two parameters to classify the environment. Uh, those, those parameters are uh, applied or referred to areas that are 500 meters times 500 meters. So you take a, pic a, a pixel, an area of your city, 500 times 500, and on that pixel, let's say, you calculate two parameters that are parameter L and parameter U. Parameter L is called land usage factor. <coughs> it's 
is a percentage is percentage of the total area that is covered by buildings just the area percentage with respect to the total does not matter the height of the building can be any anything from one one floor to a skyscraper does not matter so this is a, a, the first parameter and then you have another parameter that is degree of urbanization that is the percentage of the building area First to the same square. It is occupied <coughs> by buildings. Zero to one hundred percent, obviously, of the total build area. You take those you, with those two numbers, you can uh, classify your urbanization, and then you have to use that somehow. In the now there are more. Uh, recent classifications, it is more uh, detailed than this, that classify the area in uh, three classes and then in subclasses. Someone has to do this classification on your digital maps for you. If you use radio mobile, for example, you will find on the maps, the digital terrain maps that the program uses, already classified, but not with, with this detail. They are classified like water, land, forest, built, so it's this classification process is quite costly because there is, must be someone that actually interprets the, the maps and try to classify things. So it's not easy. Now class one is rural. Class two is suburban. And class three is urban. Class one, each class is divided into three subclasses, named A, B, C. So each pixel will have a classification like 2B or 3C, identifying the kind of... Now, the rural, uh, the, the subclasses for rural are flat. Really. <coughs> and mountainous. Suburban is because more tricky because it's residential with some open space.
B is residential. No space. And C is residential high rise. So when in, in the propagation prediction programs, yeah. one of those classes will have some coefficients associated with it to calculate the extra attenuation when you propagate in the environment. Again, uh, urban is divided in ABC. A is shopping. B is commercial. And C is industrial. We have classified our uh, urban areas. We can start thinking about how to tackle the problem. I will not go into the details, much into the details of all those classifications because who, who will work on those things and will uh, get more information. But, I will try and stay more general. Okay, how do we represent when we want to tackle the problem of propagation in built areas? How do we represent buildings? are usually represented as When we talk about propagation, outdoor propagation, yeah, now we're talking about outdoor propagation, we are still not interested in the propagation inside buildings. When we talk about uh, outdoor propagation in Europe, in urban environment, those, the buildings cannot be penetrated by the electromagnetic waves. So they are represented as solid, reflectors. You cannot expect in this kind of problem an electromagnetic ray to pass through the building to reach the other side. So they are opaque from our point of view. Uh, this hypothesis will be removed when we are interested in propagation inside the building. But in this case, they cannot be penetrated. Now, we have two propagation modes. The signal can propagate, since you cannot penetrate the building, the signal can propagate only in two possible ways can propagate over the buildings.
this is so called uh, over rooftop propagation. Or also ORT or vertical propagation. Over rooftop. Uh, the other possibility for the electromagnetic signal is because it go around the buildings. So the other propagation is propagation called lateral propagation. Now, whichever is, um, whichever dominates depends usually on the position of the base station. Over rooftop propagation is typical of macro cells, that is the cells, the, we're talking a typical application of uh, mobile phones or things like that, uh, base stations that are located on top of the buildings. They usually work with over rooftop propagation. Lateral propagation in, instead is typical of micro BTS, base station that are possibly located on light poles, on uh, the side of the buildings. Now to show this, let me uh, let me show you what we mean with this kind of things. Propagation is 
in the streets at ground level. So the, the, the signal is actually bouncing between the, 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 the buildings and uh, it stays, the, 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 the connect, the, since the users are on the ground, the connection is at the same level of the user. So those two very different propagation mechanisms ask for different methods to predict the coverage. In particular, for uh, the overroof top model, overroof top propagation mechanism, we usually use. empirical statistical models. Up to the user. And then here may be some diffraction here. But we, but we mainly use empirical statistical models. Or lateral propagation. We have to use physical deterministic models. Uh, for example, ray tracing or ray launching, we, we see those models. Uh, the difference between the two models is uh, quite dramatic in the sense that I'll show you the picture in the next picture. If you empirical statistical model just give you a rough idea of what's going on. Deterministic model on the other side are, tend to be very precise. So this is the coverage for the, the, the same city, this is exactly the same scenario. This is the, the field, the coverage that you would get with an empirical physical statistical model that is the other light that we will see in a moment. And this is the kind of uh, coverage that you are getting for the same environment for ray tracing. It's a physical determinism. The difference is striking because here you can clearly see that you have base stations, you can clearly identify each base station on the top of the roof of the building. Here you can see that there is almost no energy on the, on, on the, on the rooftop because the base state, we are talking about micro base stations here that are in the streets. So you see that the energy is channelized along the street. And to do this kind of things, you need a, a, a software that really follows the electromagnetic ray along its path, knows where it's bouncing, etc. So it has got to do a lot of computation. We will start looking at those models first. And then we move to the physical statistical models. Uh, what the slide is saying is that in, in, in statistical model you ignore the granularity, you ignore the fine details of the environment. Why here you take that and you take it. That is Amsterdam, I think. Okay. Uh, let's start with those models. Uh, questions? I keep this on because I need to protect a few things.
So this is what you would get if you were in, in an open space. And those are the actual measurements. And each curve, uh, you should have this diagram, each curve re uh, refers to a different percentage of the point. What does it mean? This means that if you take the area, only 1% of the point, for example, let's take 2 miles. At 2 miles, only 1% of the points has a, a path loss that is less than 100 dB, or only 50% of the points has a loss that is lower than 150 dB. If you, if you consider 99% of the points, for 99% of the points, the loss was up to 140 dB. So the usual median prediction would be the, the solid line here. And this is what the models that we will see predict. The models that will be shown in the near future try to interpolate this figure, this curve. And then we have to understand what happens around that median value. Uh, no one is noticing anything weird. What's going on here? This uh, change in, uh, in the behavior of the curves is due to the fact that here, at 10 miles from the transmitter, it was actually going out of New York. So it was entering, when they did those measurements, the area here refers to a rural, kind of rural environment. So the, and they found actually that in some points, the signal is in the rural area further away from New York is actually greater than what you get in the city closer to the country. Now, uh, they need the uh, all those measurements and uh, that's what they found. very simple expression of the uh, loss, the median losses, that is this, this curve, and they said that is equal to the gain of the uh, base station transmitting, gain of the mobile station, multiplied with the height of the transmitter times the height of the receiver, divided by the distance squared, squared, multiplied by beta. Where, as usual, F, F, L, uh, as I said, those are median losses. and uh, beta is what they call clutter factor that is actually the distance between the computed small dirt and the solid line. So, for, for example, for this case would be 25 dB in this example.
Another uh, set of measurements was done in Europe in, uh, by Holbrook. Those measurements were carried out in the UK. And uh, again, you have median loss, median fat loss in BB as a function of distance up to 10 kilometers. Now, on plain earth, you would expect this kind of behavior. What they measure is this cloud of points, this scatter points. And the less square fitting curve is the decline. So again, what they experienced also in, uh, in Europe is that there is a substantial distance between plain earth predicted electric field and measured in the urban environment. It is definitely weaker. In this case, we start from 35 degrees less. So the measurement in the UK confirmed what, they, what was found in the, in the US. Time passes and we arrive at the early 80s, early mid 80s, and uh, time was right for a more accurate model. The time was right to, to, to have a more accurate model. of the points that 
on the area that we are considering. Then we will have to do something about it. So it's just that being a, an heuristic model, there is no much physics behind it. So it's just, I just didn't believe it. The number that you get is dB, as usual. dB of losses expressed in dB. Let me see if it is right. Okay, what is what is what are all those parameters? Now F is the frequency. In megahertz, oh, the model works for frequencies between 150 <laughs> and 1050 megahertz. That's where, where it has been developed. HT is base height of the base station. Between 30 and 200 meters. We're talking about urban environment, so we would not have thousands we will not have base station on, on top of the hills. Now, that parameter function, this is function of the receiver antenna height. And he's got this expression. Unfortunately, since those models are being constructed by interpolating measure data, the interpolating function can be quite complex. Eventually, we got, we got D, that is the distance between the base station and the user, and the user, and this is between 1 and 20 kilometers. As 
as I said, this, this uh, model was developed for uh, urban environments, and there is a correction for uh, semi-urban environments, or suburban sub areas. For suburban areas, you take the losses for the urban area, Parameters are different. The parameters are different, but the idea is the same. You have an interpolated function that uh, gives you the an estimate of the of the loss. I just want to, uh, and then we we move on because those models are. Not particularly interesting about uh, uh, the main one, so we will not we will not investigate those models in details. I just want to, for completeness, to present the uh, model that has been that is used in Europe, that is so-called Etsy GSM 1008. One possible example of an atalite model, you will find a lot of them around. Then you have to choose whichever you think best fits your needs. So this is a very simple model because it takes rural or urban environment. It assumes at base station height of 60 meters in a rural environment and 50 meters in a urban environment. And uh, as soon as a mobile station height of 1.5 meters in both cases. Uh, assume that uh, you are holding your mobile so about 1.5 meters above the ground. And the median loss is very simple. It's one that .3 log the distance. This is for 1.8 gigahertz. It is the and why for the urban environment is where the distance is in kilometers. And uh, as simple as that. So they, they just, just apply this method. And uh, if you want to calculate, now I anticipate this, but then we will tackle this in more details. If you want to calculate the field inside the building, you calculate the electromagnetic, the, 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 
the losses up to the building, and then you say, okay, to penetrate the building, I have, in a rural environment, 10 dB more of losses, of extra losses. And for the urban environment, 15 dB. That's it, quite huge. Quite uh, sharp, let's say. Okay, as I said, you will find dozens of other light models that have been developed in the past. You will find more references on the book if you are interested. I will not go into further details of this. Questions? General or this? Some little bit more of physics, are the over rooftop 